I hope you'll forgive me. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm here to talk about periods, menstruation. You know, yati lari, tamada lari. Very simply, after living in Myanmar for over two years, the thing I most want to talk about is menstruation. And the story I most want to tell is that of a 12-year-old girl named Nini. I met her last year to interview her. We were sitting in her house in Tanlin, just outside Yangon, and the rain was bouncing loudly on the tin roof, making it difficult to hear her speak, which was actually convenient, because Nini had something very, very shameful to tell me. She had started menstruating. As soon as we started talking, she burst into tears because she was afraid I would tell other people. Her story of becoming a woman had started a few months back in fear and in tears, as she had found herself bleeding from her hoha, her vagina, <laughs> and, thought, and thought she was dying. No one had told her to expect menstruation. She rushed to her mother, who confronted her briefly, before giving her a set of instructions. Rule number one, she said, when you're menstruating, you shouldn't wash your hair. Rule number two, you shouldn't run around or play outside. Rule number three, menstruating makes you dirty, so you mustn't worship the Buddha. Rule number four, you shouldn't come close to any boys, even your brothers, on these days. Rule number five, you must hide the fact that you're menstruating. Nini got no other information. She's now not just confused by the weird bleeding, she's also scared that she's going to get one of the rules wrong. And every month, she tries to miss school on her period because she's terrified that people will say behind her back that she's dirty, smelly, disgusting. <coughs> Nini told me that she doesn't feel free anymore. <coughs> she told me she wishes the day she became a woman had never come. She told me she wishes she was a boy. There are five million adolescent girls in Myanmar like Nili. Menstruation is a defining experience as they grow up to becoming women. Unfortunately, the vast majority of girls are not well equipped to face it. Firstly, because of the taboo that leads them to be misinformed, kept in the dark. Only a minority of girls learn about menstruation at school. Most teachers skip the subject because it's embarrassing. And girls won't ask questions because they're told that it's shameful to show interest in their reproductive health. So most girls, like Nini, will learn about menstruation from their mothers, but themselves, most of the time, are misinformed. And the result is, in a study earlier this year in rural Magway, half of 700 girls said they believed that menstruation was a disease. 90% of them said they believed that menstrual blood contained dangerous substances. I've heard from a lot of girls that it's bad blood, rotten blood, that it needs to come out of your body because it's full of dirty, toxic things. That it makes them impure. Imagine what this belief does to a girl's self-esteem. And then this misinformation directly impacts girls' health. In the same study, only half of girls believed that bathing during menstruation was healthy. 70% of them were wearing their pads for more than eight hours on average, far too long. And as a result, a quarter of these girls were showing signs of urinary tract infections. A quarter. And these are not just painful, they can also lead to very serious health issues. Then most Myanmar women believe that menstruation is when they're most fertile, which is the opposite of the truth. And a lot of younger girls believe they can get pregnant by simply sitting next to a boy. <laughs> and women, uh, mothers have revealed to me their little secret, that they say this to their girls to keep them away from boys and avoid early pregnancies. But just imagine the anxiety that this lie creates for girls and the impact it has on their social lives. So most Myanmar girls and women, because of the taboo, don't know the facts of menstruation but they know the rules. 
Don't drink cold drinks, don't eat tea leaf salad, cane juice, guava, sour food, bitter food, don't exercise, don't bathe too much, don't wash your hair. If you get any of it wrong, you could die. <laughs> there is no scientific evidence behind these restrictions, but in the absence of other knowledge, that's what girls focus on and actually stress out about every month. The Myanmar girls and women are hung by the social norms that surround menstruation. Tradition in Myanmar says that it is something to feel ashamed about. And it's working. Nearly 80% of these rural Magway girls said they felt ashamed at their first period. And tradition here also logically says that women should hide any evidence of their menstruation. And failing to do that is widely accepted by Myanmar society as a valid reason to be mocked and shamed by males. Seriously? Well, this leads to great stress for girls. They're constantly worried of staining, leaking, smelling. They're constantly checking their backs. It dominates their decision making. Some girls will buy their, pad their pads at night to avoid being seen. Others will keep the same pad for the whole day at school, just so that no boy sees them carrying one to the bathroom. And it distracts them from important things. Girls will not stand in class to answer a question by fear of a stain. And some of them, like Nini, will simply want to skip school on these days because the fear of being found out is too strong. And where does this shame come from? Well, it comes from this universal belief, and not just in Myanmar, in many societies around the world, and my own country, France, is also guilty. The universal belief that menstruation is dirty. And in Myanmar, this also means that the whole female body is dirty which then apparently makes women inferior to men by nature. Just saying this makes me cringe, but also makes me wonder why? What is this thing we're calling shameful and dirty? So here is a woman's uterus. Get ready every month to host a baby by thickening its walls with blood and tissues. When there is no pregnancy, this lining breaks down and flows out to the vagina. So menstrual blood is the matter that made up the walls of our mother's womb. Menstrual blood was our first home. And menstruation is evidence of a woman's ability to host and protect a baby. Isn't that noble? Isn't that the opposite of shameful and impure? So saying that menstruation makes us inferior is not just unfair, it simply doesn't make any sense. Yet it's highly destructive. Half of Myanmar's population, 25 million women, are feeling worried. Sorry. Yet it's highly destructive. Half of Myanmar's population, 25 million women, are feeling worried, insecure. They are distracted, restricted, discriminated every month for 35 years. Their health is at risk. Their self-esteem and confidence are permanently damaged. And if half of the population is suffering from these issues, held back in their ability to realize their potential, then it's the whole country that ends up losing. So menstruation is not a woman's issue. It's everybody's issue. Sorry. So I hope by this point you understand and agree that we need to do something about it. And the good news is we can. In fact, around the world, things are happening every day to fight this menstrual stigma. In Uganda, a charity is teaching boys how to make pads. In India, a movie called Padman became a blockbuster earlier this year. It only talks about periods and pads. It's great. <laughs> and in the UK, a member of parliament recently publicly said that she was on her period. How refreshing. So these are very positive times globally. And Myanmar needs to follow suit. We need to educate girls so they know how to be healthy. We need to educate boys about menstruation so they start supporting girls instead of mocking them. We need to build girls' self-esteem and boys' confidence and boys' respect for girls by clearing any doubt that men and women are of equal value. 
Some work is already happening. The government is working on improving reproductive health education. Several NGOs are providing women with information and support. I'm also starting a social enterprise called Pengale to equip girls and women with safe pads, education, and positive values around menstruation. And then there is something that all of us here can do. Something simple but essential. We can all stop beating around the bush, no pun intended, and normalize menstruation by talking about it to a friend, a parent, our son, our beautician, our taxi driver. Let's just say the M word, menstruation. Yati lare. That way, we can help break the destructive cycle of stigma and taboo. We owe this to our girls so they can grow up to become healthy, confident women. We owe this to Myanmar, so that half of the population can contribute more to society. Let's realize this vision by making menstruation normal. Actually, it's not just normal. It's noble and wonderful. It helps create life. And that, to me, is worth celebrating and praising women for. Thank you. Thank you.